Mixing live action with animation is nothing new. Mixing the two mediums goes back at least to the 1920s when Walt Disney made a series of Alice in Wonderland shorts in which a real actress was spliced in with the animation. Gene Kelly danced with Jerry Mouse in 1945's Anchors Away. Later, in 1953, Esther Williams swam with Tom and Jerry in a musical called Dangerous When Wet. Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke interacted with animated characters in 1965's Mary Poppins. And, of course, there was 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, among many others. Hey, friends! This time, we're talking about a flop from 1992 that is both awesome and terrible at the same time. Namely, Cool World, starring Kim Basinger, Brad Pitt, and Gabriel Byrne. Cool World was Ralph Bakshi's supposedly grown-up answer to Roger Rabbit. I say supposedly because the picture that was released was nowhere near what he intended the movie to be. Anyway, hey, let's get into it. Our story goes like this. In 1945, Brad Pitt has just returned home from the war and takes his mom on a joyride on his new motorcycle. That ends badly for his mom thanks to a drunk driver. Just then, Pitt is accidentally transported to Cool World by this scientist. Flash forward to 1992, where Gabriel Byrne is Jack, a cartoonist who's in prison for manslaughter. In a fit of jealousy, he killed his ex-wife's boyfriend, apparently, and is just getting out of jail. He draws a comic called Cool World and mistakenly believes he created the characters and events from the Cool World environment when really, he's just observing Cool World subconsciously. Eventually, he gets drawn into Cool World itself by Hollywood, a la Take On Me. Holly is a hot, sexy cartoon chick who wants to leave Cool World and go to the real world, but she can't. She needs Jack's help to become real so she can escape Cool World. Meanwhile, Brad Pitt has become a Cool World cop and warns Jack not to have makeouts with Holly, which of course he eventually does. <laughs> this turns Holly real, and together they return to the real world. Brad Pitt follows because Holly is going to unleash chaos, destroying both the real world and Cool World in the process. Somehow. Ralph Bakshi is, of course, an animation legend. His most famous work, arguably, is Fritz the Cat from 1972. He also made the animated Lord of the Rings movie, Heavy Traffic, Wizards, and Fire and Ice. Sadly, Cool World appears to have been his swan song when it comes to theatrical pictures. Aside from the principal cast, we have Deidre O'Connell. She's been in tons of stuff, most recently the Amazon series Open Range. Carrie Hamilton plays a comic book store employee. She was in the Fame TV series back in the 80s. Maurice LaMarche from Pinky and the Brain is here, as are some other cartoon voice actors like Joey Kamen, Candy Milo, and Gregory Snegoff. And Frank Sinatra Jr. is here in a cameo where he sings a number with Holly. The action takes place in Las Vegas, so I guess that makes sense. Interestingly, William Wyndham has a small part as the voice of an ink monster. Uh, he was a star of the TV series The Farmer's Daughter, and he was a regular on Murder, She Wrote, as Jessica's friend Dr. Hazlitt. But his lasting fame will forever be his turn as Commodore Decker in the classic Star Trek episode, The Doomsday Machine. Tony Jay, a longtime Shakespearean actor with a fantastic voice, also voices an ink monster. Kim Basinger brings the hotness, both as cartoon Hollywood and the real world Holly. Brad Pitt does what he can, and Byrne is trying as the troubled cartoonist. But all in all, 
the effort seems wasted. This movie feels weirdly dated. I mean, yeah, it's from 1992, but what I mean is it feels older than that. More like a product of the 1970s. It wants to be Fritz the Cat, but it isn't as good and isn't as innovative. As I pointed out earlier, it's all been done before and isn't bringing anything new to the table other than the idea of a guy making out with a hot cartoon girl. And I'm not even sure that was new in 1992. And there are things here that look kind of cheap. In fact, unlike Roger Rabbit, the animation is a little sloppy in places, especially where real people interact with the cartoons or cartoon objects. Scaling is off, placement is off, it just looks rushed. It's been done before and done better. Where the movie shines is in the background paintings and some of the animation. It's imaginative and colorful and there are some good things here, even some interesting ideas. There are two-dimensional cutouts the characters interact with in Cool World, like Brad Pitt's car here, or furniture and whatnot. They're 2D cutouts, but they're also 3D like the people, so that's an interesting touch. But in the end, Cool World just doesn't seem very cool. All of the random NPCs here are more annoying than anything else, and Cool World doesn't look like a place you'd want to spend much time in. Ultimately, the real failure of Cool World is in its protagonists. Well, the mom, the cartoon girlfriend, the neighbor lady, and so on, all seem fine. None of the main characters are likable. At all. Brad Pitt doesn't seem to know what to do with himself, so he stays in Cool World. The guilt he feels over the death of his mom is never really dealt with. Presumably that's why he never left Cool World, but why become a cop? No idea. And then there's Jack, the cartoonist. He believes he's dreamed up and invented Cool World, but the truth is, the place already existed. He doesn't really seem to deal with that. And then there's the fact he committed a murder. Okay, he, he served his time, but he never really seems to face what he did, and it's never an issue for him outside of one guy mentioning it. Holly has no reason to cross over into the real world other than just wanting to. Brad Pitt is supposed to be our hero, I guess, but he's kind of a jerk. Maybe they were trying for that burnt out cop or private eye thing, I don't know. But he mostly comes off as a jerk. Jack's not likable either, he's a total jerk. And Holly is just as bad, selfish and arrogant. There's no reason to root for any of them. And there's so many questions left on the table. And how does just having a makeout session with a human make a cartoon person into a real one? Or unleash Armageddon? No idea. We just have to accept it on face value, I guess. All in all, I found Cool World kind of disappointing. There are some good things here, and I'd say it's worth a watch at least once. Bakshi fans will get more out of it than the rest of us, but as a more adult take on Roger Rabbit, this one doesn't deliver. The potential was certainly there, and the art is generally good, so I'm giving Cool World a half-hearted two paws. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.